built a notice. I've just left myself on the FTSE 100 market, but I can change that later if I need to. Now initially, the filter in SharePad doesn't actually do anything. You have to start telling SharePad what to look for. Can you restart please? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to restart. From the very beginning. Okay. Once again, I'm just restarting. Apologies for anyone who's been watching from the beginning. Um, so first of all, welcome to the SharePad webinar. Uh, my name's Paul. I'm from the uh, support team here at SharePad. Uh, today's webinar will focus on how to use SharePad to run filters. Another word for that might be stock screening. Um, it's a very uh, useful part of the product. It's typically where you're going to get a lot of value from your SharePad subscription. So it's definitely worth knowing how to build filters within the SharePad platform. Um, so typically when you're filtering the markets in SharePad, your focus will be on the blue side of the screen. So you can see I've adjusted the central splitter to um, give myself a bit more screen space on that blue side. I can retain that visibility on the green side, but of course that's occupy, occupying far less of my screen now. Um, and when you want to start filtering, You'll typically take your mouse, head over to the filter menu, and then typically you'd click on apply filter. Okay, so from here, I can choose from the two filters I already have, or if I want to build a brand new filter, I just have to click on the green new button. Great, so the first thing you do, you give the filter a name. Once again, um, don't be uh, overly concerned about the name of your filter because you can always change that later on. But uh, I'm going to look for some good uh, income stocks. Uh, the optional description, uh, you can put some useful information in here. It will help you when you refer to the filter later on. Uh, perhaps it will remind you what your intention was when you built the filter. So I'm just gonna put some some information here, just to point out really where it appears. So there we go. And then lastly, you can choose an associated list. However, I'm not going to do that, but if you were to associate it with a list, that would just ensure whenever you run the filter, it will dynamically go to a specific list within SharePad. By leaving it on no associated list, that just means it will work with whatever market, whichever list I'm looking at. So let me just okay that. Okay, so there's my new filter. It's already selected. I can see that. Uh, I click on okay. I go into my new filter. I'm just running that on the FTSE 100 market at the moment, um, but I can change market if I need to. Uh, initially, the filter doesn't actually do anything, so you have to start telling SharePad what to look for. Very easy to do. Um, you just click on the add criteria button, which is on screen. And then you can go through the various sections looking for the metrics you'd like to use. Uh, great if you just want to browse and see what's available. However, if you know what you're going to use for your filters, you're going to save a lot of time if you type into the search field. So for example, I know I want to filter on yield. So I'll just type that in. There you go. There's all the matching metrics uh, on screen. I know I want uh, dividend yield. So I'll just mouse over and click on that. Okay, so it defaults to most recent. Um, so using that selection, SharePad will pull the most recent uh, year-end metrics for each and every company. Um, but if need be, you can actually utilize up to 10 years of historical metrics. Uh, likewise, up to three years of forecasts. So quite a lot of data available to you. Uh, and then down below, a lot of different options available. Uh, I'm actually just going to leave it on value of, so that's going to grab me the most recent dividend yield value for each and every company. I'll just click on OK. Fantastic. So two things have happened there. Number one, we've got visibility on that yield column, so we can see all the, those metrics for all those different companies. 
Uh, but number two, and more importantly, we've actually got the yield criteria. So this allows us to impose our custom restrictions and tell SharePad what it is we're, we're looking for. So for example, I want to identify which of these stocks will, get, will have um, a minimum of 4%. There we go. So I just input four as my minimum, hit the apply button. So by hitting on the apply button, you refresh what's on screen. You can see SharePad strips away anything that doesn't satisfy your requirements. And we're limited to these 19 companies. All of these have a yield of at least 4%. Now I want to um, expand on that. I want to add further criteria to my filter. Again, very easy to do. You just once again hit add criteria. And if you know what you're looking for, just type it into the search box. So I'm going to start typing the word cover. There you go. I was looking for dividend cover and I found it. And I'll stick with the most recent value. And let's say perhaps you want to make sure that all of these companies can afford to pay their dividends at least one and a half times. So you could go for a minimum of 1.5. There you go, and obviously SharePad then strips away anything that doesn't satisfy that requirement. We're down to these eight companies on the FTSE 100 market. Um, now I'll just cover off some of the things you can do. So first of all, you can certainly switch to different markets. So if I take the mouse, click onto FTSE 350, that filter is still running, uh, but of course we're now capturing the results on this larger market, hence we have 19 matches. Uh, likewise, you could actually go into other lists, and there's all the different uh, lists available within the SharePad platform. Let's say you want to look at some of the uh, small caps, perhaps you're going to look at AIM. And there we have the 12 matches on the AIM market. So once you've actually built the filter, it's actually a really fast way of of running the filter across the different markets and looking at the different uh, results available to you. I want to expand on that and um, look ahead. Um, I want to make sure that in the future uh, I'm going to be looking at companies with uh, a good yield and, and um, decent dividend cover. And it'd be much the same actually. I'd, I'd add the criteria. So let's say I'll, I'll go for yield again. But instead of the most recent, I'll go for that one year forecast. And you can see there's a, a bit of a different picture there on some of those companies where you're not getting that 4% minimum yield for the year ahead. So I could go four as my minimum. And I'm just future proofing myself a little bit with my filter. And again, exactly the same with the dividend cover if you want to incorporate the forecast dividend cover. that down to a 1.5 minimum there you go so the the a market is obviously pretty large and by taking that down to just those four companies obviously you've now got a, a bit of focus for your uh, further research you know looking into just four companies will doesn't seem so much of a daunting task um, there are some other metrics to consider um, if you want consistent um, companies that consistently pay dividends, you could also look at years of payment just to check that they're doing that year on year. Um, so if I add criteria, that would actually be under dividend per share. And you can see that there's some options here, years of payment, for example. And you can see straight away that you know, one of these companies has consistently been paying dividends uh, for 17 years in a row. Um, <clears throat> a similar metric is available on years of growth. And obviously you'd use that if you want to make sure that the dividend per share amount is actually increasing year on year consistently. Um, 
It's really easy if you now want to relax your filter. So let's say you want to ignore the most recent and just focus on some of the forecast metrics. So you could actually just untick the relevant criteria. So those criteria are still part of your filter. They're just not playing a part in restricting the market if you untick them. Now the important part is hitting apply because that's what refreshes your display. And there you go. So ignoring the most recent year end yield and dividend cover, I now have a, a list of these 14 companies, a bit more focused on the forecast metrics. Okay. Another thing you can do at this point is switch down to your uh, setting menu. So that's at, always at the bottom of your display. You'll notice whenever you're filtering, you are dynamically on a filter setting. Very useful in that this is a setting that ensures the relevant columns appear on your table as you add the criteria to the filter. You can, of course, switch to your different settings. I've got some of the defaults running at the moment. So, for example, the equities overview. By changing setting, I change the uh, columns that I see on screen. But the filter is actually still running. I'm still limited to those same 14 companies, just changing the columns and therefore the information that I get for these companies. There you go. I want to have a little look at some total return metrics. Um, there's an, a great setting already in the program available to all of you called Momentum. So that gives me visibility on some of the met um, momentum metrics, but over a variety of time frames. And I find total return quite insightful because um, you can spot the impact of a uh, dividend income versus the performance um, ignoring it. So let's focus on some longer time frames. I've got three years and five years in mind. And I'm not actually going to add criteria, I'm just going to add some columns. So I'm clicking on the add column button and I know I want total return which is under the price section. So I just want that three year and the five year. Notice I'm clicking the add button which is a nice way of adding multiple columns without having to go back into the add column dialog box. There you go. And it would make sense for me to move these columns. So I'm just going to select the column heading and you then get the move arrows at the top. So that's a nice way of getting them into the correct position or the preferred position, I suppose. Great. And I was look, hoping for some good examples. I think there are some. So, for example, there's a, there's a nice example there. Um, not familiar with this company, but that doesn't matter. I can see over the five years the share price has taken a bit of a hit, it's down over 18%, but if we look at the difference that dividend income makes over those five years, um, you'd actually be up uh, over 9%. So total return of metrics might give you a bit more insight when you're uh, looking at uh, dividend income stocks. Okay, I'll move on. I just want to um, have a look at some staple uh, safety metrics, um, conventional ones that I come across quite often. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to exit this particular filter. So there's the exit button on screen. And that takes you back to the unfiltered environment. So I've got the whole of the aim market on screen now. I'm going to go back to the filter menu and I'm going to click on apply filter. Now. Another option available to you, which I'll just touch upon, is apply quick filter. So as the name suggests, this is a bit of a quicker way of, of running a filter. Uh, it basically eliminates the step where you have to give the filter a name and so on. In fact, we'll have a look at that now. So you go straight in. You have to be a bit careful, I suppose, with running a quick filter because it won't automatically save the filter that you build in this environment. Um, but the option is available. So. I'll cover that as well. You'll have a, the ability to save the filter is what I mean. So I'll click on add criteria. I just want to look at some staple growth metrics. Um, I have turnover in mind.
And if I stick with most recent value, that would just output uh, the turnover value that you'd read off the income statement. What I'm interested in is uh, turnover growth. So I've selected the growth option. Uh, notes that works in tandem with this little drop down menu. So that'll be the most recent one year growth. Fantastic. So now in the column, I've got visibility on the stocks that have uh, experienced uh, growth in their sales versus the ones that haven't. Um, and if I want to impose some sort of restriction on that, let's say at least 5% growth, I can do that. And then I'm going to add a, another criteria. This time I want to look at their profit. So I'll typically use EPS for something like that. And again, I'll go for the growth option. And again, you can spot the companies that have seen growth in their profits. And if you have a, a minimum in mind, I'm just going with 5% as an example. You can do that. We're down to 85 matches. Now, you, you don't actually have to scroll down to the bottom of the list to see that number. That's always available on screen. You can see it's at the top here where it says 85 batches. <clears throat> Possible other safety metrics. Um, you could look at avoiding companies with, let's say, large amounts of debt. So, for example, hold on, I've just been instructed to stop for a moment. Okay, I'll resume. <clears throat> so again, I'll click on Add Criteria. So a useful metric to look at would pull from the uh, company's balance sheets. Uh, we have net borrowing in the product. And I'll stick with the most recent value. So you can see actually there's a lot of negative figures um, appearing in the column. Now, if a company actually has a negative under their net borrowing or their net debt, that's um, an, an indication of uh, the company being in a cash surplus position. So it's actually a bit of a positive. But if you want to avoid companies with large amounts of debt, you could impose a, a minimum, um, uh, sorry, um, probably a, a maximum figure on the, uh, on the, the net debt. Um, but I tend to want to use something that's a bit more comparable across the different companies. Um, and gearing tends to be quite useful for that. So I'm just gonna add gearing as well. Here we go, so we've got the net gearing. So I'll take that uh, net borrowing figure, but measure it as a percentage against the, uh, the company's nav. You can see where they're in a cash surplus position, they've got no debt, hence their gearing outputs are zero, they're not, they don't have any gearing. Um, and I can start avoiding companies with uh, that are highly geared and I might have a maximum in mind, let's say I can tolerate up to 25% in terms of gearing and I can hit apply. Um, Something that's common or something I've, I've encountered on occasion is mention of how you could be a bit more relaxed or forgiving with gearing uh, when you're looking at well-established companies. So perhaps if you're filtering on large caps, um, so FTSE 100 is a perfect example, I suppose. So there's six companies on the FTSE 100. Um, actually, I want a few more results, so I'm, I'm gonna go to the FTSE 350, there we go. And you could have a higher limit on the gearing, let's say a maximum of 50%. And it's, I suppose it's quite logical in that um, well-established companies should be able to uh, manage their debts a, a bit better than uh, smaller companies. So um, it's not such a red flag to see you know, up to 50% gearing on, on these uh, well-established companies. 
Um, there's some other useful things you can do with the filters in uh, SharePads. For example, you can use um, what we call com combine items. So that's where you take two different metrics, you make them work together to give you, I suppose, a bit of a custom output. Um, a great example could be where you want to identify companies that have debt which is less than, let's say, three times their profit. Um, so the way you'd achieve something like that, you'd add a criteria. You'd start with the uh, the net borrowing. But instead of clicking on the OK button, uh, you could actually click on Combine Items. And then this is the uh, comparison. I'll come back to that. If I click on the Select button here, this is me choosing my second metric which would be uh, profit. Let's go for pre-tax profit. That seems sensible. Okay, so what I could do is net borrowing divided by pre-tax profit. So I'm coming up with a financial ratio by combining these two items. What I said at the beginning was uh, I want to make sure that debt is less than three times the profit. So if I divide the debt by the profit, I could actually set a uh, maximum of three. Hit apply. I'm down to 30 matches on the FTSE 350. So I'm identifying uh, companies where their debt is uh, less than three times the profit. And that's the way to achieve that. So I mentioned at the beginning, you know, the quick filter um, being a way of getting straight into filtering without having to go through the process of giving the filter a name and so on. But now I've got the filter. Um, if I click on exit, I would actually lose it because it isn't actually going to be in my list of filters yet. But you, you should spot, hopefully, there's a keep button. So if you decide you want to keep this filter for future use, click on it. And now you encounter that familiar environment where you can give the filter a name. So I'll just give this a sensible name. This was my, uh, I suppose, safety metrics. And there you go. And now I can safely exit the filter knowing that the filter remains available for future use. So if I want to use any of my filters again in future, I'm going to go into that filter menu, click on apply filter, choose the one I want to use, so safety metrics for example, click on OK, and you can see SharePad remembers all of my parameters, all of my minimum, maximum, etc. So the filter just kicks in as soon as I run it, ready to use across all those different markets in the, in the software. Um, you don't actually have to build filters yourself. We have a, uh, we call it a filter library. So there's a lot of pre-built filters on the library. Uh, will be a bit of a time saver. Um, and they tend to align, well, a lot of them align with uh, the educational content um, produced by uh, our writers. Um, I suppose it'd be worth mentioning where you can see that content. I'm just going to show you that quickly so there's the home uh, button on the top left corner if you click on home you'll see the very first section is articles and insights so you can access that educational content the three most recent uh, available immediately but if you need access to all the articles you can always click on the all articles button and that will open in a separate tab let me just come out of the home screen so that ties in with what I'm about to show you. Let me just exit this particular filter. So I'm going to go again to the filter menu. I'm going to click on apply filter. And this time I'm going to click on library. So it's quite an extensive list here of different filters that you can install. Um, you can also utilize the uh, drop down menu. So let's say I want to focus on 
income filters. And oh, that's, that one's on topic. So we have a Phil Oakley filter here, um, profits and dividends. If I click on that, and you can actually see within the uh, description text that it's from his article and very useful, a clickable link. So you can actually go straight into that article by clicking on the link, uh, do a bit of reading, gain a bit of an understanding uh, about what Phil Oakley's intentions were when he was building this particular filter. Let me click on install. Okay, so I know I've got that installed. I can see that. I'll close the library, returning to my list of filters. And there we go, I've got the Phil Oakley filter available to me. Um, I'll click on OK to so go into it. And no matches on the small cap, that's fine. Let's switch to the FTSE 350. And there you go, so the four matches on Phil's filter. And you know, you haven't had to build this yourself. It's, it's quite a sensible filter, you know, it's covering two of those metrics I've shown you, the yield and the interest cover. Um, dividend per share, years of payments, and <clears throat> this is an interesting one. This one's checking that uh, dividend per share has actually increased. He's set that as a minimum of 0 0.1, so it would actually strip away anything that has seen um, zero movement. So if they're paying the same dividend amount year on year, then obviously that equates to zero growth. That's just no move. So that would eliminate those as well. Okay. The filter is a starting point as well, so you could actually customize uh, the filter. You could add more criteria. Um, you could change some of the parameters. For example, if you want to be a bit more relaxed and go with that 1.5 as a minimum, you could certainly do that. Again, the important thing is just to remember to click on the apply button to refresh that display as you make changes. <coughs> um, the only other thing I really wanted to cover was um, sector filters, um, which we've recently made a lot easier to do. So what I'll do, I'll come out of the Phil Oakley filter. I'm on the um, momentum setting. Shep has remembered that I switched to that one. I'm just gonna go to equities overview, which is the starting point for most SharePad, for all SharePad users. This is the um, default display as a new SharePad user. So first of all, I wanna get a bit of visibility on um, sectors. So I'm gonna quickly add a column. Okay, great. And there's travel and leisure. So if I want to filter by sector, we've now got a restrict sector button, which is the fastest way of doing this. Clicking on restrict sector will limit me to just the travel and leisure companies on the FTSE 350. Travel and leisure is actually quite a, a diverse sector. You can see you've got uh, Domino's Pizza on the same list as EasyJet, and they're obviously very different companies in terms of what they do. If you ever need to drill down to subsector level so actually let's just get a column on there so we can get some visibility on that so subsector level in this case on easyjet would be airlines well we've included a drop down menu on the restrict sector uh, button so you could actually specify that you want to restrict it by subsector and of course we're now looking at the three airlines on the FTSE 350 I could switch to other lists, have a look at, for example, LSE shares. And now I've got all six of the uh, airlines on the London Stock Exchange. So it's a quick way of finding them. This works quite well with um, sort of the macro analysis. Um, so let me just turn off this sector restrictions momentarily. Um, within SharePad, if you go to other lists, you'll spot uh, we have the FTSE 350 sector indices. So this is taking a bit more of a top level approach. Uh, I was actually gonna put it on the momentum setting. It's done that automatically for me, so that's useful. So you might, you might want to look at 
uh, some of these sectors and see which of the, these sectors is the best performing, let's say over the last, I don't know, one month, for example. So you're just gonna double click on your one month column. Aerospace and defense is the uh, top performer. And if I click on the restrict sector button, actually, let me make sure that's on sector. So that's a nice way of quickly switching to the uh, the constituent shares within that particular sector. Okay. And you can, of course, go into your setting menu, put it on momentum. If you then want to check which of these constituent shares are the best performing, you know, which of these are really driving that sector performance. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in terms of the uh, ways of filtering the markets in share pads. Um, I'm hoping that it gets you to a point where you now know how to build your filters. And of course, you can embrace any metrics you like. Um, I'm open to questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to questions. So if you have any uh, questions you'd like to ask, I'll be happy to answer them. You would, of course, be welcome to uh, contact our support team if you ever needed help with building uh, any filters. Um, let us know what it is you're hoping to achieve. We can actually connect in over a remote session using something like Team Viewer. We could take control of your mouse and, and actually show you how to build the filter on within your copy of SharePad. Um, <clears throat> I'll just wait in case anyone wants to ask any other questions? No? Okay. Well, other things to be aware of is um, our YouTube channel. Um, we're regularly uh, posting content on our YouTube channel, lots of uh, quick help videos and so on, which will help you get the most from SharePad. So the question's come in, can you exclude a period of time in filters to ex ignore the effects of COVID-19? Yes, so we're looking at recent data. Actually, that's a good question, and it's the very reason why I typically include uh, forecast metrics uh, when looking at yield and dividend cover, because I'm aware that looking backwards will, will potentially capture metrics uh, derived from a time where companies may have stopped uh, paying dividends. <coughs> No, the, um, thanks Phil for your question. There isn't an Alpesh uh, special edition of SharePad um, at the moment. Um, it's difficult for me to comment on that, but personally I, I, I hope to see that in the future. <clears throat> ah, there's a cancelling question. Um, do you have a cancelling filter? EPS growth 20 to... 20% 25% in most recent quarter. Sales growth of at least. Ah, so we're looking at quarterly metrics now. Yes, you can filter on quarterly metrics. Um, let me just turn off that restriction. Let's just focus on that for a moment. Very good question there. Um, so what I'll do, I'll go to filter and then quick filter. So when we add criteria, and we'll be looking at EPS on the cancelling. think we are. I can't see the cancelling question anymore. If you could get that back on for me, please. Thanks. EPS? Yeah. So you can see when whenever I'm selecting most recent, that's actually um, working in tandem with the options here, which I, I, I haven't been interacting with. So they've always been based on the full year metrics. Now you'll see uh, quarterly metrics are available. So for example, you could compare quarter one uh, and select growth and that would actually then measure Q1 versus Q1 the previous year. Okay, so you get metrics on there where available. Now, yeah, 
I know you want the sales growth as well. Sales growth would be the same thing, but turnover. So um, add criteria again, go for turnover. And again, you could select a quarterly one, looking at the growth. So you're getting quarter on quarter growth now. Um, there you go, got visibility on that where it's available. Um, if you wanted to do, let's say, quarter two against quarter one, that's where combine items is really useful. Um, I'll give you a quick demo on that as well. So if I go to add criteria, let's just stick with turnover for the moment. So you can see I could go for the quarter two turnover and then use combine items. Just spotted that's going to be cumulative. So that would actually be Q2 plus Q1. Although that's more relevant for uh, US companies, I suppose. But let's turn it off regardless. So that would be Q2 in isolation. But that's why we're getting very few results on the uh, LSE listed companies because most of them won't actually have Q1. They will do half year and full year typically. But let's um, combine items. So I can look at percentage change from and then look at the Q1 turnover. So I'm looking at the growth between the Q1 and the Q2. So combined items is very, very useful for these custom uh, metrics. If you start with an existing filter and change it, can you resave it? So I interpret that to mean you want to save the amended filter but retain the original one. My recommendation there, okay, that's a very good question. If I go into filter and then apply filter, income stocks, what I'd recommend doing is copying that filter. You've got the copy button. That way you can make changes to the copy. But of course you know that the original will not be impacted by your changes. You know, once you go into that copy, exactly what I've shown you already, you can add criteria and so on and make your changes. Does that answer your question, Julie? Is it possible to merge two lists, FTSE 100 and NASDAQ? Uh, the way I'd achieve that, Gary, would be, to, it's, it's, it's not actually gonna merge the two lists as such, but you can uh, put, them, put the um, constituents of both lists into a portfolio. I know there's a limitation on portfolio size, but I think that would work quite well for FTSE 100 and NASDAQ. Um, so let me just have a look at that. Other lists, NASDAQ. So it's quite a lot there. I don't know if that would work. I think we've got a 5,000 limit on a portfolio size, 5,000 items. It, well, we wouldn't hit that. Let's give it a go. Uh, add to portfolio, add all shares. I'll do a new portfolio. I'll just call this uh, FTSE 100 and NASDAQ. Portfolio currency is pound sterling. So I've just added all of the NASDAQ shares to the portfolio and then switch to the FTSE 100, add to portfolio. Add all shares to portfolio, that one again. And now if I go to portfolio and select a portfolio, go to my new portfolio. See that's an amalgamation of the FTSE 100 stocks and the NASDAQ stocks. I was able to do that because I've kept it under that 5,000 item limit. Sometimes in TA filtering, it's unclear if you select a value of five days, whether it's saying the actual day five days ago or any day during the five days. Sometimes important. Okay, so um, when you're running technical analysis filters, you and I'm referring to binary options here, so you know true or false, has there been a golden cross, for example, uh, you'll typically have um, a look back period, which is your way of relaxing the filter. Um, for something like um, these binary uh, uh, filters, um, I, I'd actually add it as a column because um, that's a bit of a faster way of working. So if I um, let me just sort out on name, 
if I add a column and I'll stick with a very conventional column, uh, a golden cross, um, in, embracing the six and the 21 day moving averages. Um, so here's the five day look back. That's adjustable, you've got a few options there. Okay, let's get back to where we were. So we were looking at the to uh, te technical analysis column. Um, it's actually disappeared, so it probably didn't save what I'd done. But let's just quickly pop that back in. I was just going with the golden cross, with the five day look back, and then demonstrating how you'd sort on that. There you go, obviously lots and lots of matches there, but you're not having to go into a separate environment where you've got a filter running. This would be a quick way of spotting golden crosses. Okay, any other questions? Any plans to add more than 30 columns to the list display? <laughs> so that's um, not really a question uh, I can answer. That's a question I can pass on to our development team. Definitely uh, related and tied into um, limiting uh, the, the number of simultaneous server connections for each account. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's something I can ask them, I can come back to you on best to uh, send in a uh, support email, uh, support at sharepad.co.uk, uh, Peter, so we can come back to you directly on that one. Ah, so you've put on a sector filter, how do I turn it off? Okay, so normally when you turn on a sector filter, it's because you've clicked on the restrict sector button at the top. Okay, to turn it off, you just click on that restrict sector button again, that should do the trick. Oh, the other thing um, in relation to the limit of 30 columns, uh, that's why the setting menu is uh, invaluable. Obviously, we're talking a limit of 30 columns on each setting. Um, so you can, of course, switch between your different settings, and that's made a lot faster once you add your settings to the toolbar. So add setting to toolbar now gives me a quick button to get to the momentum setting, for example. Okay. Oh yes, uh, uh, yes, I see your comment about uh, MA. Yes, once you change the variance, it does refresh the uh, the online uh, dialog, uh, the on-screen dialog rather. So yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <coughs> okay, well, thank you very much for uh, logging in. A copy of this webinar will be made available on our uh, YouTube channel later on um, if you want to re-watch it. Um, very happy to take calls. If you want to call our support line at any any point, you know we're around Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. If you want to speak to me directly, just call in and ask for me. Um, if you prefer, you can send in uh, your questions over email. We can respond to your emails. Um, uh, likewise, uh, you could utilize the chat room facility within SharePad. Our most active chat rooms are General and SharePad support. Um, we've got a very nice community. Um, often you'll get an answer from one of your fellow SharePad users. So um, it makes, make use of the available support channels, certainly. Um, I, I started to mention earlier the YouTube channel, um, regular content uh, being updated all the time, lots of quick tips, videos, and so on. Um, it's definitely worth subscribing and clicking on the no notification bell. Um, so you find out as soon as uh, we drop new content. Um, yeah, that's, that's everything from me. So thank you very much for watching this afternoon and uh, I hope to see you guys on the next webinar. Bye-bye.